If there was a pendulum with risk on one side and wisdom on the other, where would that pendulum land for you? Are you overcautious? Are you so concerned with handling your responsibilities appropriately that you never do anything that has a high risk of failure? Or are you rash, never pausing to, to think before you act, moving ahead with the latest big idea without pausing to consider if it was actually God's idea? So how do we embrace the tension between wisdom and risk? We all love the story of, of, of Simon Peter, right? That, that memorable moment when, as all of his friends looked on, Peter took a huge risk and he stepped out of the boat and began to walk on the water towards Jesus. We love his audacity. We applaud his courage. We're inspired by his faith, even though he sank. And not only do we all love it, we've all used it in our youth and children's groups. Why? because this is a story we are confident will stir the hearts of our children and young people. There's something about the call to adventure, isn't there, that resonates in their spirit. There's something about taking an audacious risk that we know captivates their imagination. Indeed, there is something in the life of every young person that longs to step out of the boat. How sad is it then? when age robs us of our audacity, when the passing of years suppresses our childlike faith. But for those of us in leadership, guys, this must not be because comfort and safety are not the natural habitat of the leader. Leaders thrive in out of the boat territory. They are the first to climb out over the edge, to step out into the water and to say, with God, the impossible is possible. Brennan Manning reminds us that to live without risk is to risk not living. And that's why I believe that the call of every leader is to continue to be captivated by the spirit of adventure. But, but there's one part of Simon Peter's story that we so easily miss. One word, in fact, which confirms that Peter's antics are something to be lauded and not laughed at. The, the hinge which, uh, upon which Peter's risk should be considered as great faith as opposed to great foolishness. The one crucial word upon which this whole story pivots is, come, come, Jesus said to Peter. Peter's risk, can be considered great faith for one reason alone. He acted in response to the call of his master. You see, the difference between faith and foolishness is the call of God. See, doing crazy things based on good ideas is not great faith, it's great foolishness. But doing crazy things based on God's ideas is not great foolishness, it's great faith. And I wonder if sometimes in children's and youth ministry, we're quick to celebrate risk and slow to commend wisdom. See, risk is cool, risk is sexy, risk is fun. But wisdom is, well, wisdom's just kind of a bit dull in comparison. <laughs> it doesn't scan quite so well in our talks. It doesn't capture the imagination in quite the same way. But without wisdom, risk is foolishness. All risk and no wisdom leads to empty bank accounts, burnt out teams and disheartened young people. But all wisdom and no risk leads to bored young people, dim faith and plateaued ministries. But when you find that sweet spot between wisdom and risk, wow, that's the place where faith grows, where hearts are set on fire and where the impossible is made possible. And I believe that you lead at your best when embracing that tension between wisdom and risk, when in response to the voice of God, you make bold moves and you take great risks. So let me ask you those questions that we posed up front just one more time. 
If there was a pendulum with risk on the one side and wisdom on the other, where would that pendulum land for you? Are you overcautious? So concerned with handling your responsibilities appropriately that you never do anything that has a high risk of failure or are you rash? Never pausing to think before you act, moving ahead with the latest big idea without pausing to consider if it was actually God's idea. Where does that pendulum land for you? I pray that you would be both wise and audacious, both shrewd and risky. I pray that you would learn to hear the voice of God so that when you hear him say, come, you would stride courageously into uncharted waters. I pray that you would learn to lead from the sweet spot between wisdom and risk, because incredible things emerge from embracing the tension. And as we finish, I just want to encourage you again and to say thank you for everything that you do, everything that you risk to give yourself to invest in the lives of children and young people. Man, there's, there's, there's no greater task, there's no greater call of God than to pass on the gospel to the next generation. So keep going. Do not give up because what you are doing is important. Thank you.